Hello, my name is Stormy Peters, and I'm going to talk to you about a book I recently read called Dream Hoarders. So it was really annoying because this book is full of good ideas that I think we should all listen to and understand and think about, um, but it, it lectured to you the entire book. So the author, Richard Reeves, um, claims to be middle class, upper middle class. Um, he's a naturalized citizen of the United States, and um, he claims that the upper middle class is creating a world in which our own children are always going to be the upper middle class, and that there's no room for upward and downward mobility in the United States anymore. And his solution in the first 70 pages, which I almost didn't make it through, um, seems to be to lecture the upper middle class and tell us to make sure our kids do not do as well. Because unless upper middle class kids move down, um, poor kids cannot move up. And so he lectures the middle class and the upper middle class and says that we need to stop doing things like calling our friends when our kids need internships. Um, and his whole premise seems to be based in the first part of the book, seems to be based on the fact that if rich kids don't become poor, poor kids cannot become rich. And I think he missed the American dream there a little bit. The American dream is that everybody can do well, that we're all going to live in suburbia and, you know, have two cars per family and two kids, and the whole world is going to be successful. And he, the whole first part of his book, um, he bases on saying that some kids have to do poorly so others can do well. Now, luckily for me, um, instead of reading the whole thing in the library, um, after the first 70 pages, I put it down for a couple weeks, but I picked it back up, um, and he had some better ideas later on in the book. Um, so, the beginning of the book, he spends a whole time talking about how people who have it well, middle class, upper middle class, rich people, um, need to make sure that their kids don't do well, It's kind of what I got out of it, so that poor kids could do better. But in the second half of the book, he actually gets into how, how all of us could help poor kids do better. Um, and so some of his examples and things that I think most people could get behind um, were things like better birth control um, so that people can do family planning in an effective manner. Birth control hasn't changed a lot over the years and we have children that are born um, to parents who aren't prepared for them. So if we could have better birth control, everyone could plan their kids better and then they could do better financially because they could make sure they had a job and a career established first if that's what they needed to do. Um, he suggested home visits because early childcare is super important in making sure people do well in life and so you want to make sure his idea of meritocracy isn't it, he said it should be for kids that all kids should have equal opportunities in life and be equally prepared for them um, so home visits help um, kids very young kids get the care that they need and helps parents know what they should be doing and get emotional support um, he advocated for better teachers in poorer schools and he had a number of ways that um, we could do that all the ways cost money which totally makes sense um, and, and he wasn't advocating for worse teachers for better kids, he was just advocating for better teachers for poor kids and making sure that um, the opportunities to teach in, in schools that had more poor kids were just as, as good as the opportunities in good schools. Um, along with that, and this one might be controversial, but I like it, um, he wanted to do away with some of our zoning um, laws. So he thinks the world would be better, the United States would be better if we had neighborhoods that were much more mixed. In that way, poor kids would get the same opportunities as, as kids from wealthier neighborhoods. Because right now the kids with, from wealthier neighborhoods in the United States um, get better schools because they their neighborhoods generate more tax, and so their schools get more resources. Um, plus, the parents in those schools are more likely to do fundraising um, and have better opportunities for their kids. So he said if we could have more less zoning and more mixed neighborhoods, um, we'd be giving more opportunities to poor kids. Um, he also advocating for more affordable college. Um, he didn't think that was in the solution of things like 529 savings plans. He said all those savings have gone to middle class, upper middle class. Um, just because of the way they're structured. And he said it's a, it's a political quagmire to try to do away with that. I guess Obama tried to do away with 529s and reached a lot of resistance from upper middle class. Um, but he thought we could make college more affordable for everybody, which would be great for everybody. Um, he wanted to do with, away with legacy admissions. Um, so legacy admissions is where if your parents went to Harvard, you're more likely to get into Harvard. And Harvard's very open about this process. So is my alma mater, Rice University. Um, I think to change that, um, you're going to have to do it at the, at the across the board, you know, with a law, um, because I think most people in the United States are very proud of their alma mater and want to see their kids go to the same one. Um, so I think that's going to be hard to fight on an individual basis, just like the one that I shouldn't call my friends to help find an internship for my children. Um, and he also, speaking of internships, um, he wanted to see those 
become more like real jobs and he kind of wanted to ban free internships because those go only to people who can afford to not work for the summer um, or who can go live in New York City or San Francisco and not work for the summer. So he thought if we made internships more like jobs um, and had minimum wage and had, you know, process, anti-discriminatory processes around it, um, we would improve things for everything. So that was my super fast, super brief summary. So of this book, which has great ideas and a really annoying package. It is only 155 pages long, if you don't count all the appendix in the back. Um, so if you want to read it, it's a good read, um, once you get past being annoyed in the beginning. Um, maybe I'm annoyed because he was talking about me, maybe I'm annoyed because it felt like he was lecturing, um, but I thought if he really wants people to buy into his ideas, um, he could repackage it. Anyway, this is Dream Hoarders. My name is Stormy Peters. If you enjoyed this, please put a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.